Last year, I developed a program to read license plates and then transmit that information to a gatekeeper. This year, I've decided to improve upon it and make it open source. In this video, you'll learn how it works and how to set it up on your own. So the project is divided into three main parts. First part is dedicated to YOLO V8 fine tuning. Here, you can train your own version of YOLO V8 to recognize license plates. However, you don't really need to worry about that because I've pre-trained all of the possible YOLO V8 models on my own and you can easily just download it from the repository. The second part consists of the WebSocket and matching server. This server is responsible for monitoring the IP camera, reading the license plates, and then forwarding that information to a client. And the last part is the aforementioned client. So we'll start by cloning the repository. Also, don't worry if it takes a bit of time, you're not only downloading the source code, you're also downloading the AI models. After you're done cloning the repository, you can follow the steps inside the readme. The first thing we need to do is go into AI resources. Okay, so I'm gonna jump into the repo, AI resources. The next step is to copy the following command and place it into your shell. Go back into the root of the folder install PyTorch. This command will vary based on your system configuration. You can generate this command using this site and just run it. As you can see, I already have it installed. Then proceed to install Tesseract. You can find the tutorial on their website. After that, you need to install requirements. As you can see, I already have that. Oh, and if you want to run the program as a systemd job that runs as a root, you should probably do all of these commands and prefix them with this. So we've installed all requirements. Right now, we want to start the server. So we'll go into server. Copy that env, that development to that env. Then set up the env. We'll look into that later. Set up the DB server. Basically, you'll copy this command and perform the steps shown on the screen. At this moment, we have the database set up and we can proceed to set up on our environment. And what do we have here? You should probably check out readme for more information on each variable. However, I'm going to give you a brief summary on all of them. In the video I showed you in the beginning, the program is actually running in a debug mode, which shows the camera in real time. Next, we have VS port. This is the port of your WebSocket server. Then we have RTS Capture Config. You probably want to use this one with username, password, IP, port, and endpoint. However, for the purpose of testing, we're going to use the test.mp4 provided in the repository. Pure role model path. This is the YOLO model that will be used for car recognition. License plate YOLO model path. This is the YOLO mod this is the fine-tuned YOLO model that will be used to recognize license, license plates. These five settings configure whether you want to save recognized license plates into the database. When enabled, this will save the car the cropped car image and the cropped license plate image into the results path should send same results. Uh, when we are checking the IP camera, we can recognize the car multiple times. If we've already recognized it in the five minutes beforehand, we won't send the car again. However, if we have not recognized the car yet, we will send it to the client. 
skip before YMAX. For example, our car can be too far and we can already tell that we won't be able to read the license plate. Because of that, we can skip these images. Basically, we take the bottom part of the matched car and we calculate how many pixels is it from the top. If it's more than this number of pixels, the car will not get skipped. If it's less than this number of pixels, the car will get skipped. For my personal use case, I found that around 250 is a sweet spot. So since we've already done all of the steps, we can go ahead and start the server. Right now, you can see the inference working. The first time the car gets matched, it will take a while because we need the Tesseract server to start. So at the moment, we have the server working, so we can go ahead and start the client. So either A, you use something like a postman. As you can see, we, see, we received the image and the license plate. But receiving the image like this isn't very practical. So I programmed a demo client that you can use. Go back into your project, open it in a code editor, make sure that this variable is set up correctly. This should be your WS port environment variable and run cargo error. As you can see, the WebSocket status is connected and it got recognized. It works correctly most of the time. If you want to train your own AI model, stick with me for a minute. The first thing you want to do is go into the AI folder. Then you want to, based on your system, execute this command or this command. After that, we need to prepare our data sets. All you have to do is run python prepare.py. Also, don't be scared. These warnings are totally normal. At this moment, you should open Visual Studio or any other code editor and look into train.py. Here, you want to play around with these settings and these settings. After you've done all of that, you want to run python train.py. The process of training will take some time and I don't really want to wait for that in this video, so I'm gonna cancel it. After you're done training, the result will be inside runs detect train weights. You probably want to use the best.pt. At this point, you probably want to see how your model performs visually. So you can run python test.py, then provide the path of your trained model, and then provide the image to test on. As you can see, this model performs fairly well. And yeah, that's it. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments. Uh, check out the source code, it's available on GitHub. And yeah, uh, have an amazing rest of the day.